Welcome to the channel everybody, the Minnesota Twins franchise is back again. Welcome to episode 104 with the first place Minnesota Twins just ahead of the Chicago White Sox. We are about to enter the final month of the season. I do plan to play a lot of these games, may even stream some. We have the minor league playoffs upcoming, which we haven't focused much on the minor leagues this season, so I thought about streaming some of that. But we should have a chance to have some really big moments now down the stretch as we try to finally make the postseason for the very first time in this series. And it's certainly been a long time coming. Last episode, there was a comment with a recommendation that I liked. Michael Conforto is really good at hitting off righties, while Nelson Cruz has been in the downswing of his career. He's also better against lefties than righties, so Michael Conforto is now going to be the DH when we face righty pitching. And here's what happened the first game he started. The Twins win 13-2 over Toronto, and Conforto goes yard, also gets a double, has a nice game as the Twins win 13-2, and Dallas Keuchel wins 8 innings. In the next game against Toronto, another shutout. Buxton goes yard, and the complete game goes to Maxwell Fowler, who did it with no strikeouts at all. We end up sweeping the Blue Jays. It was a four-game series, and three of them were shutouts. That is almost impossible to pull off. They scored two runs in four games. Here's the final one. 7-0 Minnesota. Conforto goes yard again. That change is already paying off. So if you ever want to leave recommendations down below, you know I incorporate a lot of them into the episodes if I like them. So here we have the results of the minor league seasons. Triple A Rochester, very good. Double A Chattanooga, very good as well. So their playoff seasons are upcoming. I would have some interest in playing some of that, perhaps. Johnny Sandoval's coming back from injury. However, I don't really see a spot for him on the roster. He's also not quite fully healed, so I'll just keep him on the disabled list for the rest of the season and we'll see him again in spring training next year. On to a series against Detroit. We win this game 4-2. Victory goes to Tony Watson. Yadier Alvarez had six solid innings. And the next day, another win for Minnesota. All wins in this episode so far. Sano goes yard and the pitching is doing a really good job. We've seen Vizcaino get a couple saves in this stretch already. And let's try to go get another sweep. We're here in Detroit, 80 wins on the season. The most we've ever had in this series is 88. I'd obviously like to get to 90 and get that playoff spot at last. Michael Fulmer on the mound for the Tigers, putting together a very respectable season. And Miguel Sano chasing his 40th home run of the year. Mike Trout is already in the 40s, the only one in the American League above him. Sano takes a big swing at this changeup, 2-2, two and, two, and a chopper stopped by Fulmer. He recovers, and the play is made. Nothing for Minnesota in the first, and it was Fulmer versus Dallas Keiko looking for win number 17. He has a chance at the Cy Young, a chance at 20 victories. Can he get closer today? This is Jose Iglesias into right field, down for a hit. And Quig having a little trouble with it as that will be a double to start the day for the Tigers. And here's someone who's given the Twins plenty of issues over the years, Miguel Cabrera still having an outstanding year at the plate. With the runner in scoring position, he flies softly into center, it's shallow and falls in. Buxton throws home, it's runners at the corners to start the day for Detroit. Castellanos with the pop-up. That's over to second base and glove by Nick Gordon. Two away. Now we got to get the X-Twin out. That's Wilson Ramos, the catcher, hitting 219. Keuchel's first pitch in there. It's a slider at the knees. One and two. Keuchel gets him to climb the ladder. Strike three on the heat. No score. We all know Byron Buxton's been hitting well this season. He has a current six-game hitting streak, hitting 260 on the year. 1-1 one, one count with two away, and a ground ball finding right field grass for a single. That'll bring up Nick Gordon. Yes, still wearing number 83. Maybe we'll just keep it that way for the rest of the season. And he flies out to left field to end the second inning. I love these statues out in the outfield, by the way. That's super cool. 
Bottom two at the plate, Daniel Murphy, one of the players the Tigers have signed. And Charlie Blackman had some issues here. I don't know, I sometimes have issues like that in the outfield. It seems like I'm good for at least one play like that a game. Here's Zach Cozart striking out on the changeup from Keuchel. One down. The lefty Travis Snyder gets a hold of one. It's going deep to right, and it's over the head of Puig. It bounces away from him. He'll finally gather it as Daniel Murphy heads home, and it's 1-0 Detroit. I think they ruled this a triple, the first of the year for Snyder. Hitting 202 entering today. Of course he makes the big hits. How about Aaron Hicks, another ex-twin, driving in a run, 2-0 Detroit. And it was just out of reach for Hicks to reach second base in time. Aaron Hicks has had a fair amount of success at the plate since leaving Minnesota, both in New York and now here at Detroit. Let's go bottom three, two down. Wilson Ramos at the plate. Keuchel full count. And Ramos strikes out on the fastball, his second of the game. Michael Fulmer had a good start to this one, keeping us shut out in the first few innings. Here's Paul Goldschmidt, 3-1, getting a good pitch to hit. It's flied out deep to center, and that's going to be another out. Unable to get much going off of Fulmer. This is a pop-up from Miguel Sano. Felt like we were getting some decent pitches, and we're doing a whole lot of this. Just easy outs for Detroit. Bottom four, Daniel Murphy up again, 0-2 count, and he'll find right field with a base hit. I wasn't expecting the lefties to hit Keuchel so well, but here we are. Zach Kozart here, the X-Red, 1-1 going after a low cutter, and if he's going to go after that, let's go right back down there. It's a changeup, and Kozart strikes out for the second time. Still a runner aboard, however. Snyder again as this gets away from Kurt Suzuki getting the start in this game. Mitch Garver a little banged up in one of the simulated games. And how about another hit by a lefty Snyder to right? The throw from Puig will hold the runner at third base. That brings up Aaron Hicks, the bottom of this order, having some success. And this is fly to center. Fairly shallow. And Buxton will throw it home. They'll test it. One hop to Suzuki, and out at the plate! I couldn't believe they tested that. It was closer than I thought it would be, but Buxton gets the outfield assist, and perhaps a step closer to that gold glove I think he deserves. From Buxton in the outfield to Buxton back to Fulmer, he's going to reach with his second hit. Byron Buxton, our best defensive player and our best hitter so far in this game. Here's Gordon one more time. Buxton goes. Cold strike three. Buxton safe. I did not like that pitch at all. Here is the location of it. A changeup on the corner. That usually goes the way of the batter, but not this time. Taylor Motter up next, getting a start in the infield. Two and two, and the changeup low. Fulmer having a very good day, getting the strikeouts and basically only giving up hits to Byron Buxton. Keiko, meanwhile, having some issues here with the lefty batters. Here is Carrera hitting one sharply out to Charlie Blackman. Then it's Miggy, 2-0, up the middle. Routine for Nick Gordon. Not much here for Detroit. But still a nice 2-0 lead. Here's Suzuki. We haven't seen him much this season, and he looks at a strike three called on the outside. To put it simply, Fulmer just threw pitches I didn't really want to deal with, and a lot of them happened to be strikes. Here's Charlie Blackman trying to battle. I take a walk at this point. He'll do us one better, though, in single up the middle, making Fulmer throw a lot of pitches. It was nice to get a longer at bat and hopefully get that pitch count up. There goes Blackman on to second base, and he's easily thrown out. Perfect throw by Ramos. It wasn't really close. Then a two-strike count to Goldschmidt. He strikes out on the slider. Another great pitch by Michael Fulmer. Very frustrating game for us, only having three hits to this point. Keuchel into the sixth, facing Wilson Ramos. He hits one high in the air, out to right. It's got a shot, and we can't catch it. It's off the wall. Buxton there to handle the ricochet. It's a double. It was Detroit's five through nine hitters getting all the production. After moving over to third base, Daniel Murphy hits one down the line for a hit, and it bounces awkwardly away from Puig, and Murphy heads into second base with an RBI double. 
I don't know what it was with the bottom of this order, but Keuchel had a lot of trouble with them. Here's Travis Snyder, 0-1, nailing the inside corner with a fastball. Keuchel gets ahead in the count and then delivers a slider on the outside. It's not like Keuchel had a bad day, but it was a weird day. Let's go into the seventh. Twins still being shut out as that changeup was close. Sano gets ahead, and you see Fulmer miss just barely on those last two pitches. It helps Sano draw a walk. So one on for Michael Conforto, 0 for 2 on the day. And the first pitch from Fulmer is hit out to right field, and that one is not going to come back. Two-run shot for Conforto. Great idea to have him DH here against the righties. We needed that on a day like this. A no-doubt homer from Conforto makes it 3-2 Tigers. If he can keep doing this, that trade to go get him is going to prove more worthy. We've already gotten a few home runs since the DH changed there. We're still going to see Nelson Cruz a good bit, and of course, coming off the bench, he's still going to be great power for when we need it. But I think those two sharing the role will give us the best chance at some success down the stretch. That would be it for Michael Fulmer. Almost 99% positive up until that home run. Definitely frustrating to have your day ended by that. And now Shane Green enters. Can the bullpen for Detroit keep the Twins off the board? Here's Byron Buxton, already a couple hits. And he swings through a curveball right over the middle. That should be a tie game. Instead, 0-2, soft grounder, and Buxton's retired. Oh, man, that curveball was a huge missed opportunity. Here's Gordon with two away, and he's going the other way with it. And it's a routine play in left. So Detroit able to hang on and now looks for another run facing Tyler Duffy. And this is hit in the air out to center. And that's no trouble for Buxton. Duffy comes in, 10 pitches, 3 outs, and we're on to the 8th inning. Here's Taylor Motter. He started that, I believe, shortstop in this game, and he's going to find right center grass. There we go. Motter rounds first with good speed. The ball is cut off, but it doesn't matter. A double standing to lead off the 8th inning. Maybe it's time for the bottom of our order to produce. It's up to Kurt Suzuki, who lines it over to the third baseman Castellanos playing in a bit. With two down, it's Goldschmidt's turn, and he can't hit that slider. Good placement on it. Full count. He won't swing, and Goldschmidt walks. That brings up Miguel Sano. Looking for home run number 40. We have two aboard. Can Sano tie this game up? 2-1. Going through the fastball at 95 miles per hour. 2-2. Two and two. Check swing. He did not go around. Full count. Runners can go, and Sano strikes out looking. Fastball on the corner. What a pitch by Jimenez. That'll take us to the bottom of inning number eight. Miguel Cabrera strikes out. Tyler Duffy with some quality relief work. And with two away, here's Ramos up the middle. Tough play for Gordon. Sets his feet, and the throw is in time. So on we go to the ninth inning. The Twins need at least one. Carlos Kern into the game for save 35. He's having a pretty good year for Detroit. And I think we have the right guy up. Michael Conforto went yard earlier. What can he do now? He gets hit. I did not want to see that. Conforto hit on the first pitch. Sure, it puts the tying run aboard, but I really wanted him to swing. So he's on first base. Yasiel Puig in the air to the outfield. And that's going to be relatively a simple play. One down. Byron Buxton, one and one. He hits this in the air. High over to left field. It's deep, but not deep enough. Two down, Minnesota. And we've got to somehow get Conforto home. It's Nick Gordon looking for a big hit with two away. First pitch, he swings for the fences, not even close. 2-2, two, two, it's low. Gordon works the count full, payoff pitch. It's off the plate, ball four. Very close, and that brings up Willie Ordonez. We go to the bench. Can Ordonez provide the big hit we need? Looking for a single, 
Ordonez right side and glove by Cabrera to end the game. Tigers hang on. The Twins only get one run producing hit, so that was pretty disappointing. There are just some games we can't really do a whole lot. And I know there are some suggestions to use the PCI and whatnot. I'm not going to change the hitting. I like the way the hitting is. Sometimes you get unlucky. Sometimes you get very lucky. For the most part, it does not keep us from being able to get a lot of victories. We're going to have some games like this. Twins drop this game, but still take the series as Mitch Garver comes back. And we see Fernando Romero suffers a pretty serious injury. So if anybody were to get hurt on our staff, he's not going to be an option to be called up to replace them. So here are the series for the rest of the year. The Twins are 80 and 60. We actually get three games of separation in this episode. That's pretty good. 22 games left on the schedule. We're going to play a lot of them. I don't plan on simming like a week at a time or anything like that. So I'm hoping this is finally the year. The year the Twins can make it back to the postseason. One of my favorite things in the second half of this year has been seeing how Nick Gordon has handled himself at the plate. I think he's replaced Josh Harrison extremely well. And after the wait, it appears to have been worth it. And the pitching. The numbers are getting way better. Rysel Iglesias is currently the only pitcher with an ERA in the fours. Here's Gary Tadano, who has a 3.9. The win-loss record isn't going to stand out, but he's had a great war and FIP all season, and he's currently second in Rookie of the Year voting. Can he get that number one spot? Also, Yasiel Puig is in line for a gold glove in right field. Byron Buxton, sadly, is not. There are a few center fielders who have perfect fielding percentages this year, so it might be tough to get him the gold glove, even though I think he should have it. That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Hope you are enjoying the Minnesota Twins franchise. This has been a pretty strong stretch of the series. It's been a lot of fun, and there is a lot more to come. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.